Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you've been following along, you know I've been working on carving up some black walnut from a bunch of recent videos. This is just a project I've been working on. I got a lot of time into it, and that's why most of my recent videos have been based around it. This is just what I'm doing right now, so just keep sharing, you know, what I got going on with you guys. But I wanted to shoot this video today while I'll show you a little bit of progress on that and a couple new things I purchased that I'm hoping are going to help me uh, really get some detail in this piece and get a little more work done. So some of those tools are from Dremel. And if you guys want to see what they are, be sure to stick around. Well, guys, I've been doing a lot of carving at the bench lately, uh, working on this walnut and a couple other little things. Well, I've been using my Fordham carver a lot, and I was thinking it would be a lot easier to have a couple different setups. I don't have to keep swapping out so many bits and hand pieces and things like that. I did recently order up a Wen carver, very similar to the Dremel. I'm waiting for that thing to get here. It was supposed to be here days ago. It's still not here. So when I get that, we'll do uh, an unboxing and review video and we'll we'll see how that thing performs and kind of go over the price and all that good stuff so that's something you guys can look forward to i've been breaking out my uh dremel for this project though my hand's been getting cramped with the fordham carver and that you know big long lead coming off it so i've been kind of just using the dremel so i could really get in there and just hog it out well i was down uh to local home depot and i found this dremel attachment so I can put this flex shaft on my Dremel 4000. And I was thinking, you know, I really wanted to try it out. Now, Dremel, well, they do have some pretty decent products. I've had a few burnout in the past, and so I'm just, I don't know, very skeptical and leery about how much I want to spend on their tools because I've gone through a couple of these with light use. So it makes me nervous when I've got big projects, and I just... For me, this isn't going to be my main dependent tool. I want a couple other a couple other things to go to in case this decides to crap the bed. You know, that's, that's basically it. It's just my experience with it. And a lot of people have really good experience with Dremel, and that's awesome. My recommendation is always buy your warranties, because when things break and you're in the middle of a project, it is a bummer. Anyway, I picked up the flex shaft because, real, I just wanted to try it out. I figured I'd try it out with you guys. I also picked up some sanding discs flap sanders actually these are 80 grit i already have 120s that i use quite often but i wanted to grab a couple 80 grits and see how they i also picked up a tile cutting bit kind of hard to see in the camera there but it's got some real serrations on there and i think it's going to carve up the wood pretty good i've seen some other guys using it and i want to use that bit to hopefully get in here where you guys can see through the trees in those spots that are in there deep want to be able to get in there and kind of smooth it out and sand them out and you know use it up in here where it's really really tight corners so i'm hoping that's gonna work well for that and then i also picked up some fastener accessory no dremel easy lock sanding discs so they're just like a little sanding disc that can go on uh actually go on this bit right here they go on that I might use those up here around the moon and just kind of see how that works out. So I'm just trying to uh, get different little bits and implement different things in this project. See what works the best. So when the next thing comes along, I've already got a really good idea of what I want to use and what works well and what doesn't work so well. Because when you're doing this stuff and you're, you know, you're doing work for a customer and you have a deadline, it's really about being able to do really nice work make what the customer wants, but be able to do it in a timely fashion. When things are really hanging up and just taking a long time, that's where you as the maker starts to lose money. So let's face it, if you're doing something for a customer, you're not doing it for free, you're making money on it. And well, it's important to not lose your, your butt, you know, it's important to uh, be making money. All right, so the flex shaft comes, as you guys can see in this plastic packaging, I'm just gonna take a razor knife here, Cut that top off. We'll keep videoing as long as I uh, will go cut myself open, you know, and have some crazy mess. Be careful when you open the back, though. You've got a little collet piece back here. 
that is ready to go flying. It's not in anything separate, it's just a little piece. Got a little bag back here with some other collets and uh, wrench and probably instructions. Let's see, oh, we got paperwork. Looks like for our collets and different sizes and things, different languages. This is just some of the packaging that comes with it. Uh, this actually fits models 4,000, 400, 3,000, 300, 398, 395. It's got a whole bunch of stuff on there. Um, double check, make sure it's going to fit your model before you just go picking it up. What I am going to do is try to find it on Amazon and share the one that I got. It'll be up to you to make sure it fits the model that you have. I'll also try to find these bits and the Dremel and things, which tend to be a little tricky on Amazon, I noticed, trying to actually find Dremel brand instead of the knockoff stuff from overseas. So if I can find it, it'll be in the description below, along with my dust mask and the other things that I use. So you guys can purchase through those links. They're through Amazon and all your purchases help support this channel and buying some of these little things just to uh, show you guys. So here is the flex shaft. Forgot to mention it's 36 inches long. It's like one solid piece here. Now, I haven't done a ton of research on this. Again, I've seen some other carvers using it. Some people have really liked it. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. Now, I don't know if we can replace the flex shaft if it breaks. I think we can. I want to say Jordy at Carving Fusion. Maybe it was the flex shaft for this. He was able to replace the inside. I don't remember. I have to get a hold of him and, and double check. But I know he's got a video. He was talking about this. So... He uses a whole bunch of these on his channel. He does a lot of spirit carving. You guys can uh, check that out, that carving fusion. He does a lot of work on stuff, so be sure to go see what he's doing. He's got a lot of, uh, let's say a lot, but he's got several different tools with uh, flex shafts and different bits and uh, does some really cool work. So I'm gonna open up the bag that came with it here. Really see what we got inside. Call it this. Oh, you know what? I wonder if this goes on the end of the Dremel. This little piece I'm throwing around here. This probably goes on the end of the Dremel for the flex shaft to attach to. Maybe we'll actually uh, do something a little different and look at the instructions. Probably be a good thing to do. Normally, I just chuck them across the shop, you know. But I guess we'll look at it. Anyway, got my flex shaft here ready to go. Or not my flex shaft, sorry. I got my Dremel 4000 here ready to go. Uh, nice thing is they give you a new wrench. We're going to get this bit out of here and twist the end of the Dremel off so that we can get it ready to uh, put the uh, flex shaft on. I need to get a new collet for the end of my, my Dremel. The collet is the piece that spins in and out like the inside. It will get bigger and smaller. And my... The spot where the wrench goes on this is just, I've used it a lot. It's getting really, uh, I don't know, marred up, damaged looking. Set that aside. Oh, you know what? They give me a brand new one anyway, so that's pretty cool. But actually, it goes to here. So you get a new collet for the end of the piece there. Um, Let's see. What do these instructions want us to do? Uh, so they give you that little silver thing. kind of looks like a nut. It's got a square hole in the end. That's what your flex shaft is going to fit into. So you've got to twist this down onto the end of your Dremel. Now that you've removed the collet and you've removed that the spacer piece that twists on the plastic end here. So twist this piece back down. And it looks like you just line that square hole up with your flex shaft and twist it on. Now while doing that, there's a stop button right here, it's that blue stop button. Holding that in while I twist everything on and get it all together so nothing's spinning. So there is that. Well, right off the bat, this feels a lot lighter than the Fordham uh, handle and stuff, but this is plastic where the Fordham is quite a bit beefier. You got a metal handle, you know, so you could probably really get into stuff, dig in there deep. But I'm kind of, uh, I already know how this Dremel performs. So I'm, I am, though, a little excited to see how uh, 
how this handle is being hooked up to a flex shaft. I mean, kind of need to make a new stand or quit being cheap and just buy one so I can hang this thing up here. But I think we'll we'll set it down for now. Get these instructions out of the way. The one thing I know I've got to do is put the collet on the end. And that's what's going to hold the bit on. So I'm going to do that in just a second. This is their warranty plan and stuff. So get that out of the way. Take the old parts, throw them in the box. Put the new collet and end piece on. So I got everything twisted on. There's a silver button down here. That keeps the shaft from spinning. So that's not gonna make it go. So don't go turning it on and then pushing that in because you're just gonna grind it all up and that's that's not good. So let's twist this back out some and figure out what I wanna put in there for a bit. I actually think I'm going to just put my uh, sanding bit in here. So this is a 3M bristle sanding attachment. Okay, guys, so I got everything else set up here. Now, I don't have this hooked up to my foot pedal. I've got my foot pedal plugged into my Fordham. And what I'm going to do is just reach up and turn the Dremel on. It'll be on, and that'll be that. What we're going to do, though, is get in here and kind of sand a bunch of this up and just take our time and... Just see how this really feels in the hand. That's kind of what I'm looking at. You know, I got a lot of different tools and a lot of different carving things. And there's one thing I do want to say. I don't want you guys to think you have to keep up with the tools or think you've got to go out and buy every single thing you see me using to make really great pieces. All you really need are a couple different bits and a reliable tool. You know, if this setup is what's in your price range, then go for it. If something cheaper on Amazon is in your price range, you know, Dremel wise, but maybe a different brand with the flex shaft and you've got to start off with the no name burr bits and take your time and really get started and carve and just, you know, then, then do it that way. Go the cheaper route, which isn't always a bad thing. It's a great way to practice and see if this is something you really want to do before you start investing a lot of money. Because you'll do that really, really quick sometimes. <laughs> Trust me. I tend to continue to add to my collection of tools and things because I like doing these videos and, and sharing them with you guys. And I realize not everybody can buy you know, the top of the line or the middle of the line or they don't want the lower of the line, but it's important for everybody to see all this different stuff. You know, as the years go by and things, I'll end up giving these things to my kids or maybe I'll use them until they wear out or, you know, whatever. I'll sell them out to buy a new one, but they're here for now and I just keep adding to it. Sometimes I think there's a misconception in these videos of, oh, look what I have, but that's not the case. I just want to make sure you all know, I just trying to share with everyone you know different things and different tools and the capabilities of those tools are only limited to you so your limitation is here not necessarily the tools that you're using you know there's always creative ways to make things happen and so do that be creative and create something cool whether you've got a ten dollar dremel and a four dollar bit or you got a ten dollar dremel and a thirty dollar bit or whatever a $400 Dremel and $25 bits you know it doesn't matter you spend all the money in the world but if you're not pushing your creativity level and you're not trying something new and you're not just going for it it's not going to matter how much you spend you know just create whether it looks good or bad just create start off with some cheaper tools get into it give it a go see how it is for you before you go spending a bunch of money on stuff so with that said like I said earlier, I'll have links to all this crap in the description below. And you guys can go check it out. And uh, everything that I can, I'll share. So we're going to turn this thing on, though, and start using the sanding wheel. So right now, i got the setting down really low. Not low enough. Something like maybe 10. I wanted about, eh, it was on 15. I got it down to about 10. What I want to be able to do is not really bog the tool down, but just kind of brush right over the top. Knocking down those hard edges, kind of almost polishing the piece. Now the whole piece won't get this. So I'm going to leave some of the lines from carving. I feel like they add some character and texture to it. But this gets in here really good. 
So I've been using that Fordham carver for a while, and this is a lot lighter. So if you don't have really strong hands, or you feel a lot of fatigue in your hand, which I do when I'm carving something like this, where I got to really get right into it, but at the same time, I need a durable piece like the Far Fordham for that, a durable carver, so I can really put a lot of you know really dig it out. Something like this would be great to start with, I think. Just using it for the first time here. It's nice and light. I don't think you need a ton of hand strength to hold this unit. You know, if you get yourself a stand, I made mine, but if you get a stand to hold it up in the air, you got this three foot cable, you get your distance right, there's not a lot of pull. And with this being a plastic unit right here, there's not a lot of weight. And I know I keep saying that and it sounds repetitive, but it actually makes a big difference if you're going to sit here for an hour or two hours at a rip. I've been sitting here for an hour at a time, sometimes an hour and a half, just working on this piece, and I've done that with other pieces. And I'll tell you, your wrist, your hand, your fingers, everything gets tired and aches and it gets sore. So having something that is uh, can do the job, is powerful, and yet light enough to not have that fatigue, you know, right away is going to be really important. Now, like I said, it's my first time using it, so I don't know what that's going to look like in the long run. Geez, I'm working away, and you guys aren't even seeing anything, are you? Whoops. Here we go. Here we go. So if you were to get a foot pedal for this setup, you could be going to high speed, lower speeds, you know, whatever you got to do to really make it work. This time I got my RZ mask on, which I should have had from the start. Again, they'll be in the description, you guys. Let's uh, let's get going here. I've got my eyeball bit from Sabretooth on here. This is kind of the, I think the coarse or medium. I don't remember. But this is what I've been using to get in here and really hog this thing out. I'm going to bring you guys down, hopefully. And we'll get in here with this handpiece and start carving away and just see how this this uh, handpiece performs. I already know that bit will perform. It's been doing all this work as it is. So let's just see how it feels in the hand cutting away in here and really uh, refining this and getting more detail out of it. Normally I've got my dust collection system set up and I just, I don't right now for this video, but nine times out of ten that's going. Just shake some dust off and so we're really carving in right here. This is what I've been cutting away. Really getting into the meat of it. You know, refining this stuff. And I would say this feels really, really great in the hand. Like this really feels good. I mean time's going to tell how well it holds up because it's plastic and like I feel it getting a little warm now. Not really hot, but I can feel it getting a little warm. Time will tell. You know, when this thing decides to die or kicks the bucket, I'll definitely do a video and let you guys know. And then we can compare it from when this video is until then and, you know, have a good idea as to, uh, you know, how long this thing's going to last and how much work it's going to get done. Um, it'll do it. I'll probably put that bit that's really coarse, though back into the big part of the Dremel or back into the Fordham where I have a bigger handpiece and I can really grip it and you know not allow it to fight me at all and control the bit. The thing with holding this like a pen and trying to hog out a lot of material is I don't really think that's what it's meant for. It's more for detail work and polishing and sanding. I probably shouldn't say that either. I mean I am carving walnut so I think if you did it in soft wood you'd probably be good but I'm working on walnut so what I'll probably do is put sanding bits in this, and I won't be using it to hog stuff out. But that'll be just my application, you know. It's one of them things where if you're just starting out, it, it'll do everything you need, I think. So let's go ahead and get this bit off. Super easy. Use your wrench, push the button in, pull it off. And I want to open up and try this tile cutter bit. Now you guys know a lot, I use Sabretooth bits a lot. I am not affiliated, I don't get paid for 
saying Sabretooth bits, or, and I don't even get paid from Sabretooth for their bits. Unless you guys buy them through Amazon, then Amazon pays me. Well, I'm not affiliated. I'm not affiliated with Dremel or Fordham or any of them guys, because nobody's reached out and asked. Which, whatever, I don't care. I like using the tools. I like sharing them with you guys, because I know not everybody can get them. And I think it's important to see what's out there and see what your options are. Now, I got this bit. You guys can see it looks pretty, you know, like serrated. I know it's a tile bit, but I think it's going to cut through this really nice. And I'm not really, I say cut. I guess I'm really looking to shape and sand those hard to reach spots. I'm not going to tighten it down with that. I need the wrench. What I'm looking to do is, like I said earlier, get into the tops of these trees. So I got these tree tops. And that's, that's what we're going to be working on here. So I'm going to move you guys around to get a little bit better shot. We'll turn this thing on, probably on slow, and uh, just start kind of cleaning out some of the cut marks that are in there. All right, got my dust mask on. I'm going to turn the speed down a little bit. This thing works great. I should have bought one of these a long time ago. I'd say that little bit works great. Now, I'm not going to throw the 80 grit flap discs on there. I like to keep them in the package so I really need them so I don't lose them. But they're going to do basically like that 3M sander. A little more rough though because those are 80. And they'll carve everything. Well, not carve. I'm sorry. They'll sand things up. And I'm not going to put 80 on this though because it'll take away like some of the detail that I've put in here. So we'll stick to the 120s and some other finer grits to uh, really sand this piece down. Sand piece comes in right around 24 95 say 25 bucks, I think. Um, that's where I was able to get it at. What I'll do, again, as always, I'll try to find everything on Amazon and put it below in the description of the video. You guys go there, follow those links, make those purchases to help support this channel. And I want to thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around. Also, we are still waiting for the carving to come back from Jordy from Carving Fusion. The carving giveaway carving that I did a while back. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I'll put a video link up here in the corner of this screen. And you guys can go there. So that way there you can also be entered as that is a giveaway contest. Now me and Jordy carved this thing up together. I carved it here. I shipped it to him in Canada. He did his part and he's shipping it back. It takes about, you know, eight, nine, ten days back and forth. So it takes a while. I know it's in the mail, so we're waiting on that. When we get that, I'll shoot a video, we'll all look at it together, and then we'll discuss when the giveaway is going to take place, reiterate the uh, the details and things that you guys will have to do as well. So be looking forward to that. If you guys haven't already, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe. I'll see you next time.